Bedtime Stories uh, Sound Installation is actually a very intimate uh, work about personal experiences. Not uh, six stories that tell about uh, six different personal experiences of children uh, in the environment of the basement and set in the time of the siege of Sarajevo uh, are of course all familiar uh, to all of us because uh, uh, those stories are uh, uh, the ones that we chose are somehow the representative stories of, of um, the specific possible uh, um, ways uh, that the children were, um, let's say, um, fighting for their childhood during the war. When I say fighting for the childhood during the war, it is really not easy to understand how it is uh, to have a sudden a uh, strange uh, uh, interruption of your childhood in the form of a uh, siege of Sarajevo or in the form of any war in the world anywhere. It is, you're still a child, but you are uh, supposed to grow up in a month, which we all did. You are encountering that, but you are still supposed to encounter this, uh, the death as something which is, uh, you know, normal and it happens all, all the time and you see it all, all around. Uh, you encounter hunger or fear of uh, mostly of the older ones, not of us children. We did not fear a lot of things, but it is a very, very, uh, from this point, it's a very strange and very fast way of growing up. But back at the time, it all happened so suddenly and uh, there was no way that we could understand that this is not a normal uh, state of uh, growing up, that this is not a normal childhood, that this is a state of uh, uh, emergency and that not all the kids in the world are growing up the same way that we do then. Of course, um, neither our parents had time to dedicate to uh, us to explain us all this sudden interruption of the childhood and all this uh, uh, change of everything that happened over the night basically because they were of course worried and panicking about our uh, survival and their existence about how to feed us and and everything else that that we uh, had to go through through these 1400 years of the siege so my father for example he was uh, 33 when the war started and my mother was 29 i was 10. he found it completely normal to take me to the front line uh, when I say frontline, I really mean frontline 100 away from the, you know, from the trenches of the enemy, 100 meters away from the trenches of the enemy. And it took me all night through this graveyard, I remember as a 10 year old girl, to see my uncle, <laughs> because I was very attached to him and he thought it is really, uh, it, is, it is totally normal to take me and uh, to say hi to my uncle uh, who was there in some small house at the front line it was totally destroyed and burned and everything. So we were walking all night through the graveyard, hiding behind the graves. And there was a lot of uh, heavy and uh, lighter weapons, uh, weapon, weapon and shells like, um, you know, falling all, all around us. For me, it looked like that we walked all night, but now when I think about that route, it's just maybe like two hours. Luckily, we came back normally alive. I, say, I said hi to my uncle. He was very happy to see me. I was very happy to see him. Um, and we went back home. Now, when you think about it, it is totally, total madness to, um, to, to even uh, uh, have an idea and not to really realize such, such a crazy idea as taking a 10-year-old a, a girl to the front line. But back at the time, I bet for my father, it looked completely normal because what looked normal uh, uh, in what is normal in war is definitely not something we can understand from this point today, because nowadays it is all crazy madness. For example, there was, um, there was a movie back at the time, very popular horror movie called Pet Cemetery, and the light motive was the Ramon song, uh, Pet Cemetery. So the movie was about uh, pets which, which uh, you bury when they die you bury in the graveyard and then they rise up from the from the graves and then they torture or hunt you or I don't know what so that movie we kind of took really seri seriously as a game 
and I remember we found like maybe um, I don't know 100 meter square surface right next to the building where we lived and we were collecting all those dead animals who died either out of hunger or some private pets who we could who we, that we could not feed anymore or the ones that were hit by a grenade and then we were burying them in that pet cemetery of ours hoping they're gonna uh, rise from the grave and that all is going to happen like it, 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 it did in, in the horror movie and such kind of games we played we lived in an apartment of 62 floors in a socialist building in the center which means minimum 200 people all together in the dark in the crowd uh, without electricity heating or panicking you know us kids of course we were just we felt like um, we were, you know, they were, they're crazy and they're, they, you know, they're, um, they're boring and that they just limit us with everything with, you know, joy, fun, game, movement, uh, laugh. And um, we felt that uh, we don't have, you know, this, uh, that they're boring and that there is nothing serious out there happening and that we are not endangered in, 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 any, sen in any way that they're just, you know, panicking too much. And I remember uh, that through all, you know, there was different kinds of experiences. We, we, we had different kinds of games. And it's exactly what the work is also speaking about, about all these uh, ways that we as kids uh, were trying to fight those, uh, those uh, really not so friendly circumstances of, 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 of the basement and of, of all this mess and panic and death and, uh, uh, and pessimism that was around us. Uh, we, uh, among all, all the things we did, I remember really clearly one that we, the fashion show we organized. So, I mean, to organize a fashion show in the middle of the war is already like a crazy uh, girl idea, girly idea. We were just like 12, maybe 10 to 12, 13. There was maybe 10 of us girls in the building. Of course, we had no fancy clothes because we were just exchanging clothes. It was all uh, some really old, <laughs> really old worn out clothes that we just exchanged because we were growing up very fastly. And so we, but we proudly, you know, put all that clothes. So, and we, we rehearsed the choreography for several days. We made like, you know, the, you know, this, this uh, uh, track, how do you call it? Like, yeah. And then we put a little bit, several candles around at the, at the final presentation in the front of all these mm, uh, neighbors, 200 of them or whatever. And um, there, was no tele there was no electricity, it was completely dark, so we had candles. And I don't know how did we get the music and who picked up the song, uh, but, and, but now when I think about that song, it is, it is a complete paradox. The song was Phil Collins, Another Day in Paradise. And I remember us walking proudly in all that horrible, like really not so fashionable clothes in the front of our old neighbors in that dark, making that choreography in all those turns, you know, as they do in the real fashion shows. And we were really, you know, practicing quite a, quite, quite a long time. We were all, you know, synchronized and everything looked really well for us. And the song went like another day in paradise. And I remember that melody always, every time I hear it, 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 is, it really strikes me really strong. And the only thing I can think about nowadays, it was supposed, it was not another day in paradise, it was another day in hell. <laughs> 